Please listen carefully. Hello, universe, and welcome to the Optimus Daily Update. I'm Christy Jansen. And I'm Summers McKay. And we're part of the team behind the Optimus Daily, making solutions the news. We bring you reader-funded solutions news every day in order to change the tenor of news media, social media, and the direction of your day to one focused on solutions. Seven days a week, we publish positive news stories written by award-winning journalists and delivered online to your inbox and through our social channels. And also, we are sharing these solutions in a commute-worthy, walk-worthy, home office-worthy podcast. Today is Monday, the 19th of October, 2020. Hello, Christy. Happy Monday. How are you? Happy Monday, Summers. I am well. I'm well and fine and making my home my palace even more over this last weekend. We were able to complete our garage revamp and we built those shelves and I just kept finding myself going down to the garage for one reason or another all weekend. Exciting to see like the transformation of your garage and now you have like a productive space. And I just like going down there and, you know, getting something off of our shelves that we just built, which is where we have our sort of excess food pantry at this point. But, you know, once things are organized, they become far more usable, right? Yes. So yes. that's kind of where you're at is that you've got this much more usable space than you previously had. And, oh, my gosh, you just gave me a vision on what to do with my pantry because our son is cleaning out his room and got some new furniture and has this little mini bookshelf that is currently in my front yard, a very clampet style. But now I realize I can put it in the pantry and I can use it to organize cat food. <laughs> Absolutely. And the funny thing is like this morning I did, was doing a little meditation and <laughs> I realized that I'm absolutely obsessed with redecorating and home organization right now. <laughs> I just, that's where my mind keeps going. I'm nesting. And it's probably a positive, a positive use of my mental energy compared to getting obsessed with the outside world, which seems like it's really, really falling apart. <laughs> I'm just thinking about how to make my house nicer. Well, and you know, I think that we talk a lot about this on the Optimist Daily in the sense that we see these stories about home and nesting really go viral. And our stories that go viral tend to not be the stories that get lots of people to convert to emissaries and support the Optimist Daily, but they become these stories that go viral and are consumed and loved by readers. And we talk about this as as business owners and managers that on a certain level right now, people just need really good, lighthearted, home building, family building, cat caring, dog loving stories. (laughs) Because if you look inward, And if you look into your home and you make your home, whatever it is, whether it's a shared space or, you know, whether you're in a dorm room or a palace, right now it is focusing on home and self because we can manage it. And I can't say we can control our homes, but we can better manage our homes than we can the outside world. Well, and I guess it's kind of like, you know, you focus on what you can control and it helps you feel more in control of things that are outside of your control. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what? the next project that you're going to work on? Well, talking about pantries, in addition to the garage shelves that I indulged in, I also got a new shelf for my kitchen area to replace a smaller one, which will expand our sort of shelves in our kitchen and dining little area to make that more organized. And that'll be where I mostly put Tucker's dog food. (laughs) (laughs) I have this big tub that used to be for the cat food and then it became for the dog food. And now the cat food just sits in a bag and it's just because, you know, I have 300 animals. It's not really that many. It just feels like that many. And uh, the amount of time we spend sort of managing our pets is so crazy. And it's also so meaningful. Uh, I would not be as happy a person as I am without my animals. So I think organizing Tucker's dog food is very, very valuable. <laughs> and also, what else I, are we going to organize today? I think our stories, we're going we're gonna to be talking a little bit about learning in general. Exactly. For, organizing <laughs> for our children. <laughs> What's uh, the story well, you wanted to talk about today, okay, Summers? So I'll kick off the kids' conversation here. The headline reads, Ikea and Lego team up to save playtime and your living room floor. Now, my favorite 
line in this whole story is, I'll read the extract first, right? The goal of the boxes is to foster continued creativity and imagination without sacrificing the organization and usable space of the home. The boxes come in many sizes, dot, dot, dot. So creations can easily be moved and packed away without disrupting a day's work of structure building. All right, so that frames it. What these are is this ingenious way that Lego has created with Ikea boxes that your kids can build their projects in. So while a child may see a project in process, a parent sees just Legos all over the floor and thinks, oh God, I'm going to step on those. And boy, won't that hurt in the middle of the night when I have to go get a cup of water or somebody wakes up crying. But what I love about these, and it's called the, I don't know how to pronounce this, but it's B-Y-G-G-L-E-K. So big lek. And I guess it means to build and play in Swedish, actually. It's not, it's a real word. It is a real word. So to build and play (laughs) in Swedish. Yep. That's exactly what the product's intended for. What I just love about this is it's just like that perfect combination and compromise between parents and children. I find with Brennan's play, we play all over the house and then we put away all of our toys. You know, each evening she actually helps me put her toys away. And sometimes in her play, she'll take her toys out and put them all away. And I realize that's because that's what she sees me doing all the time. And we live in a smaller space with a lot of people. So there just isn't room for her to like be in the midst of a project, right? Projects have to start and end in, you know, the short time that we are out playing. Now, of course, she's one. So she's not quite there yet. But I would love her to have space where she can just like leave her crayons everywhere or leave her Legos, which she's not old enough to use yet everywhere or leave her blocks everywhere. Anyway, so I just think this is a great solution. I'm excited. I know you were talking about that Legos are actually collectibles. And there's this whole like Mm -hmm. black market off brand (laughs) thing happening. So I'm very much looking forward to the Lego chapter of parenting. And and just to explain what these, they're, they're, they're boxes that are compatible with Lego. So you can actually use the boxes as surfaces to build upon and they can contain it in a, a space that doesn't need to be put away because it's a work in progress that's actually being, you know, continuously it's like an, done. Exactly. It's like a mobile activity table that exactly. has a Lego platform and that the you thing build that, on the Legos. Yeah. And then the you thing, can move the box. Like it doesn't have mm-hmm. to be all put away. I just wanted to pick up on something you mentioned about how Brennan likes, she likes to put things out of a box and put them in the box because she's always seeing you like putting things away and cleaning up. And I think one of the wonderful things about play and about children and how they are resilient is that play is how people learn how to become people. <laughs> yes. It's it's how we it's how we learn how to process the environment around us. And I just want to share this story because I think I've talked about my two weeks in quarantine with my friend Aggie and, and my niece. So we were getting ready to go into our extended family, you know. And with my son. And so we had this big group of friends and family who are sort of creating a a bubble. There's two little six year olds who were, (laughs) one of their games now is quarantine. (laughs) Oh my goodness. (laughs) And part of this is because they've observed people trying to stay safe. And, you know, you, you order, you order food, you have no touch, like delivery and things like that. So that's now become part of how they've incorporated this into their play where you, you know, there's like a no touch delivery for their lunches. Oh my goodness. I mean, it makes perfect sense, right? So I just feel like this is one of the reasons that children are so resilient is because whatever the landscape is, you can incorporate it into your play and make sense out of it. It's how we make sense out of our world. Kind of like what I was talking about earlier. It's like you control what you can to make the whole world make sense. It's true. And you know, making sense of our world right now, but without being limited, right? We have a world Mm -hmm. that we need to make sense of, but we still need our children to be expansive and expressive. So I think that leads to your article. Exactly. So I think the theme for today's podcast that I really wanted to bring out is the idea of learning and different ways that people learn and how do we support the learning of our kids in this very strange time right now. There's a new study which has come out, which our headline is research says arts and STEM depend on the same type of creative thinking. And this is something that is, 
I think is not that surprising for anybody who understands children and how we learn, but it's not like you're a right brain or a left brain or, you know, it's not like people are one thing or the other math. Right. Some people say I'm math, I'm writing. And we like to think about, or we often think about arts and science as opposite, but in fact, they use a lot of the same creative thinking. And in order for us to really be successful in the arts or in science and in these STEM kinds of professions or work, you need critical creative thinking. And this is a, a, it talks about a study from the University of South Australia, which surveyed 2,277 undergraduate and graduate students who were either in STEM or art classes, and it evaluated creative self-efficacy, divergent thinking, and opinions on given solutions to problems. And in a three-part study, researchers found that across the board, in STEM and in arts, students fundamentally relied on being open to new ideas, employing divergent thinking, and maintaining a sense of flexibility in order to achieve success. And so what this is showing you is that to focus always on rote learning you actually are limiting the possibilities and creativity is so important, not just for drawing a picture or painting a scene or writing a beautiful poem, but actually you need that same kind of creative process to be supported in the minds of people who are going to be working in engineering and maths and science, because that same kind of creativity can be deployed there. And alternatively, having kind of a systematic, rigorous type of training can also support people who are creative. So Um, the practical, like the practical information that comes from this article is that don't silo creativity and STEM, right? The the practical is that the same tools of creative space and success and failure and making messes and mom not yelling at your Legos, right? Like (laughs) that is what the STEM side needs as much as the messy artist. As much as the messy artist. In fact, if you limit that, you're going to be limiting the ability for the STEM student to really succeed because the same kind of creative messiness, that kind of freedom to think and see from a different perspective is going to be what supports a successful STEM person, just like it supports a successful creative genius, right? I mean, if you think about it, math and music it uses very similar parts of the brain. And music is actually another kind of language that is very similar to math. Like, for example, my son, he's right now doing a s- online on his Zoom classes, <laughs> whatever he's doing, a sculpture class. But it's been so fun to see him really playing with different medium. And then awesome. sim- simultaneously, he's now joined the Maker Club. So now he's got a little robot that he's learning how to code. And I think that's extracurricular you know that's not part of his Mm -hmm. classes right now Mm -hmm. but I feel so supportive of him playing with both of these kinds of I think they both support his stem thinking abilities right right Um, anyway well I love I one I love that your son is doing extracurriculars even though he is online that is like you are knocking it out of the park that is awesome But we, speaking of extracurriculars and other things that have to be done, as much as we love podcasting all day, we have a team meeting to get to. Oh, yeah, we have to do that. Really well, speaking quickly, of... Here are the headlines. <laughs> yeah, really quickly, here are some of the other headlines. Avoid Zoom fatigue with this simple life hack. Flying taxis could be the future of air rescue emergency services. Ooh, that plus jetpacks. Awesome. <laughs> Playing underwater music attracts young people fish to degraded coral reefs. Oh, that makes me melt. How voting rights groups are helping inmates vote from jail. Try these next sustainable detergents on your laundry day. Uh, What else do we have? We also have firefighters that are using fireball dropping drones to contain wildfires. Yay, drones. uh, Dutch wind farm is also going to restore oyster populations. That's thinking of the big picture there. And finally, low-cost COVID-19 test produces accurate results in less than five minutes and then a development on the COVID front. Those are today's solutions, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to the Optimist Daily Update. We promise to continue to share positive solution-based stories every single day with ideas on how you can participate in this changing world and ensure it is changed for the good. We promise to cover current events with accuracy, legitimate sources, and keep offering you the information needed most to chart new paths for all of us. 
Please consider becoming an emissary on the OptimistDaily.com and for just $5 a month, support reader-funded independent journalism. Be part of the solution changing consciousness and addressing our world's biggest challenges with a problem-solving mindset. Let's keep the Optimist Daily free to all who need it, supported by those who can. Everybody, let's have a great week. Stay optimistic. Talk to you tomorrow.